at the very beginning is um i'm not intending to teach you anything new that you don't know um my main role over here is just to share with you some things actually to remind you some of the things that you already know uh, so that we can all do um something useful to you know uplift our communities and change our ways of teaching towards um, and um we know like consequently um the main goal is for the students to um attain better results not just examination results but um skills and uh, and tangible um expertise that will help them in in the in the future lives so it's such a privilege to spend this time with you all all right so um without further ado uh let me get started i have something that i prepared for you all i, I hope you're gonna like it i'm not assuming that you will like it but um i really like the magic so you know the magic of in technology you can just do, do things you know in a way that nobody can think about right um those days we needed to send these bundles of dogs to everybody but nowadays we can just share everything on the screen and everybody have access to it which is cool right so um if you don't mind good people whatever you are um i want to ask you to turn on your your cameras just for a few minutes because I want to see your beautiful faces, right? Um, looking on the screen, it feels as if you're talking to robots, and which in reality is not the case. So I want to see your beautiful faces before we get started, okay? Uh, do you mind? Just put control. Yeah, so it seems like everybody's feeling good. Um, and since the feeling of goodness is contagious, um, I hope, uh, was it the Theocratias? I hope uh, Theocratias, Theocratias will... Um, will start to feel good because you feel the way um the people you associate with feel right so they if they they are happy they can like they can share their happiness with you in some way right they can contaminate you with their happiness which is good perfect so let's go back to our session to our training today and see what i had for you so again share Cool. So our topic for today, heading back over there, um, is about needs assessment, right? Um, it's about needs assessment, and you can see that um, I cannot navigate my screen. What's happening? Perfect. Yeah. So, this assessment for professional development, empowering educators for success. Um, why do empower educators for success right um we all know the very sage words by um his excellency president nelson mandela who said that education is the power force to you know change humanity right from the way it is right now to the ideal state that we all aspire right which means the key players in this shift are the teachers but unfortunately and this is very unfortunate um oftentimes we tend to forget teachers right people from wherever they feel like they know everything about teachers they design for teachers they plan for teachers they create trainings for teachers and then at the end of the day they come to our places and try to install everything they planned in our assuming that we can, um you know productively and effectively with those kind of trainings but research shows that when teachers are not involved in anything they are doing in terms of their training uh in terms of their professional development and anything that's related to changing their um uh, their intellectual identities they don't take ownership and because they don't take ownership they don't really learn right so they can attend your trainings they can be there for who knows for a long time I don't know, just maybe a day or maybe a couple of months, learning whatever you prepare for them. But at the end of the day, they won't be able to implement the very things that they learned. Or they might be able to to implement for a couple of days and then they forget, right? So the trainings that um, are meant to transform teachers' ways of doing things uh kind of they always fall short in terms of sustainability right so 
needs assessment is partly aiming at equipping teachers with um, uh, skills and um, expertise that will help them to deliver. And I'm talking about teacher trainers like us over here to deliver, um, to prepare, um, to you know, engage their colleagues, their teachers, their communities in sustainable professional development trainings or intervention. That is kind of like the overarching picture um, of this topic and this training for, for today. So, yeah, this is the gentleman who's talking right now. Um, so again, I want to I want you to turn on your um, no, no, you don't need to turn on your, your 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 microphone or camera, but just use the chat button. Let me know when was the last time, or oh, have you ever maybe um um been at the hospital? When was the last time that you went to the hospital, right? Um, and the second question is, what did they do to you at the very beginning, right? The moment that you reached at the hospital with whatever them, I don't know whether you were suffering from something or you just wanted to do something, what did they ask you, right? What did the doctors do to you, right? And then if, if, if you've never been at the hospital, think about the customer care service, right? When was the last time that you called Tigo customer care service or, or Airtel customer care service or any mobile, any like um, mobile, like any telephone kind of like um, or internet providers in your country, right? In Tanzania, uh, for whatever the reason, right? Maybe you wanted to ask them about something. Maybe you wanted to inquire about their bundles, about their internet services, or you just wanted to ask a question about any kind of service that they offer. What was the first thing? they did to you right if you've never been at the hospital and never called the customer care then i also have one thing for you maybe right um so when was the last time that you went to the restaurant or a grill or a bar something like that um for whatever the the, the need maybe you just wanted to eat something you wanted to drink something right um or a hotel what did they do to you the moment that you reach there. So drop me something on the chat and let me know. Like, okay, I went to the hospital maybe two, three years ago or just a couple of months ago, and this is what they did to me first. Just one sentence to be enough for me. I'm going to give you one minute. Let's see. Yes, Gabriel. I see Gabriel says, um, two weeks ago, the first thing I was asked was, what was wrong with me? Cool. Where did you go, Gabriel? Oh, long, can't even remember. Good. Oh, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, today I'm from the hospital. The doctor greeted me and asked me several questions to prove to me to uh, to prove to me what was the main problem. My eyes, nice. Okay, anybody else? So you guys have never been at the hotel. We need to have a special campaign for teachers to hang out, right? Since uh, you are locking yourself in your closets for a long, long, long time, we need to hang out, guys. We need to go out. Oh, I went to the hotel, ordered Coca-Cola. What did they do to you, Onesmo? Did you just order Coca-Cola or did they ask you a question about something before you ordered Coca-Cola? One month ago, the first thing I was asked was my name and a place of domicile. Cool, perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Two more people and then I'll go back to the, to the presentation. Oh. Fortunata went to the hospital and they said, don't worry, they will be okay. Nice. Okay. Um, I went to the hospital, um, the hospital, and it was night. I asked the guard, where can I get the doctor? Good question. Out of the hospital, I said, I asked about the history of my sickness. Uh -huh. Nice. 
Okay, so it seems like almost everybody has been to the hospital, right? And there was kind of some kind of like questioning before they received the service they were looking for, right? And this is a very common practice at the hospital, right? Uh, you go there, let's say you feel some ailment, like um, you have headache, uh, you feel like your temperature is fluctuating, um, or you are like, oh, maybe you have teeth ache, right? You have stomach ache, or you just feel uncomfortable. The first question I believe most doctors will ask is, what is happening? Explain to me what is happening with your body, with your health, right? They will question you, like, do you feel this way? Do you feel headache? Uh, do you feel like, is it too hot? Like your body is too hot, right? Do you feel like, you feel like a vomiting? Do you feel like, they're going to probe you with questions in order to gauge what is, what is going on with your body, right? Because before they can figure out what is happening in your body, it will be difficult for them to save you, right? It will be difficult for them to, uh, to address your problem, right? So the first question is trying to know what do you want. Now, when you go to the customer care, nobody shared anything about customer care, but if you make a call right now to Tigo or Vodacom customer care or Airtel customer care, the first question, I believe, the first reaction from um, from the responder will be, hi, my name is Onesmo Mushi from Tigo, blah, 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 blah. How can I help you? Right? That will be the very initial question. Right? My name is somebody, somebody from this place. How can I help you? Why? Because they need to figure out about your problem, about your need, about your inquiry before they can attend to your needs. It is difficult or even impossible for them to give you like uh, a very specific um, response to your problem before they know anything about that problem, right? Some applies. If you go to the hospital, I mean, to the hotel right now, a bar, a grill, or a restaurant, the moment you sit there, those are buses or, or maybe the maids or whoever, they will ask you first, like, what do you want, right? They will provide you with the menu, right? And give you multiple options and be like, please go through this menu. Let us know what you want. And I'll be back with you in, in a minute, right? They will give you time to explore the menu and find out what you want, right? So this is kind of like a tradition in almost all places on earth, right? Um, before people can attend to your needs, they need to know first what do you want and it's the same logic that we apply in training in teaching before we train others before we help others to learn something we need to know first what do they want to learn what is their need right what is relevant to them the problem that we teach us and i, I, I won't say teachers because oftentimes it's not teachers themselves but the problem with a lot of authoritative figures, especially in a centralized education system like Tanzania, where everything is prescribed by, by the government, is they plan everything for us, right? They think about our trainings, about our needs, about our whatever, and then they organize everything, they put together the training, they bring it to us without involving us in any way. Now, the problem is we start to act, resist, like we start to resist that uh, imposition because we feel like it's not part of us. Sometimes it's not what we need, right? You feel like, ah, okay, I'm teaching in school ABCD and I can see that my students are struggling with communicative English, but these guys are bringing me training on something else. You know, like, wait, if you could at least train me on how to teach students English language communicatively, the language they acquire would be would, would be helpful, right? Uh, in other subjects as well, right? So maybe I don't need you to teach me about tenses. I just want you to teach me about communicative strategies. Or I don't want you to teach me about uh, literature analysis. I want you to teach me about the theoretical underpinnings of literature, right? So sometimes we don't take this proactive, pro, like proactive initiative of asking teachers what they need before we put together trainings, right? So the goal of this talk today, and I'm calling it talk instead of a training, is to break this chain of imposition 
and try to teach ourselves how we can, you know, reach out to those teachers first before we put together any training, learn about their needs, and then come back, put together the training that is relevant to their needs, and then deliver that training. And throughout this process, we try to the best level possible to involve those teachers because when they feel like they are part of their training, of the training, they are part of the of the of the intervention, they take ownership, they take charge. And when they take charge, it can help them to feel like, oh, we are responsible for this. We need to do something. They learn to do that the training becomes sustainable because they will not just learn for the sake of this training, they will learn for the sake of becoming lifelong learners, right? So that's the main objective of this session. Yesterday, um, I asked uh, your fellows to click on this jumbo board um, and let me know what do they really want to learn from this session, right? So instead of doing this today, I'm gonna ask you to put to drop a line on the chat let me know, what do you want to learn from this session? I didn't want to prepare objectives for the session because the session was meant for you, not for me, right? So I was like, okay, I know that I've already prepared the session. I know that I have strategies and steps and this and that that can help you get something related to needs assessment. But I want you as a trainee in today's session to let me know, what do you want to walk away with from this session today and then i will tailor my talk to make sure that at least i, I don't want to promise that you'll get everything you want but at least you will walk out of this platform with something tangible that you can use in your training so let's take a minute and drop one line um on the chat uh to, to, te to tell me like what do you want to learn from this session today in relation to needs assessment let's take that perfect i see one one line is already there by uh yeah thank you Ntui. what do you want to learn from the session today yes in relation to needs assessment let's do that if you won't say anything the session ends here i will not let's see uh -huh. and feel free to write in any language right uh, you don't need to write in english if you don't feel comfortable with english you can write in any language i, I mean at least swahili and english I can speak Chaga as well, so you can drop a line in Chaga if you want. Um, I know Pare, you can put Pare, a little bit of Samba. I know Chinese as well, so you can drop um, a line in those languages. Let's see. Okay, how to make an interactive sessions in workshops, okay? That's on next mode. Cool, perfect. Biases in assessment. Mm, that's a big one, Gabriel. Thank you. If you don't touch on that, Gabriel, please remind me. How to apply technology into teaching? Okay. I want to know how to share some pictures while teaching on Zoom. Cool. Perfect. Um, uh, to identify best ways to assess needs in our trainings. Cool. That's Annie. Okay. That's Samuel. Um, how exactly do we assess needs in our trainings? Okay. Annie. Let's see. Okay, I'm looking for five more lines before I proceed. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Cool. Fortunata, how to recognize needs that are better to my trainees. Perfect. Thomas Kipungu, it's my interest to know how to identify needs of learners during teaching. Nice. Okay. Looking for three more. Looking for three more. I want to know, this is Veronica, I want to know, where is Veronica first? I want to know how to apply te technology in teaching, okay? I would like to learn how to prepare a workshop for fellow teachers of different subjects. Nice. Learn about professional development, all right? That's a big one. I wish I could be able to enable my fellow teachers to feel comfortable with the change in technology. Mm -hmm. How to know needs of my students. Nice. So, you guys all have some some um objectives in mind right you have certain goals in mind and it's those goals that brought you to this session because you are looking uh for something and you feel like you're gonna get something out of this right so that is the same way that teachers who you will train maybe in the cup of i don't know who 
I don't know how long after after this training, they are also looking forward to learn something, right? But they are the only one who know what they want. So before you can help them achieve their objectives, at least you need to know what are they looking for? What are their objectives? What are their goals? By knowing their goals, then you can tailor your training to make sure that they get what they really want to get. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not promising that you'll get everything you want. No, but at least I'll try to make sure that I gauge this talk today um, to help you get something, especially uh, for those objectives that are related to, to needs assessment. So the first thing that we need to think about is the question of needs. Like, what is needs, right? What 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 is needs assessment, right? So I have three definitions over here, um, and they, they, they all capture some nuances, um, and, and I think they give us like a broad overview of what needs is. They are not exhaustive, so we'll not get everything about needs assessment from these three definitions, but at least they will give us a picture of, okay, what do we mean by needs assessment? So that the moment you sit down and decide now to explore the needs of your trainees, at least prospective trainees, then you know what you're looking for, right? Because you cannot assess needs if you don't know what needs is or what needs assessment is, right? So the first definition by, by Stevens and Gillam, um, needs assessment is the process of gathering information. So you are gathering information about the desired change, right? So um, there's a goal in mind that we want to achieve this. This is the big goal. This is the overarching goal. This is the desired change that we want, right? Now, how do you know about that desired change, right? You need to gather information. You need to collect information from different sources, right? So that is um, a brief, quick definition of needs assessment, right? Needs assessment, gathering information about something. You want to know, okay, what is the desired change? What is the goal, right? And how can I, you know, uh, construct my training, mold my training to make sure that I reach that desired goal or that desired change. The second definition, needs assessment is a set of procedures undertaken for the purpose of setting priorities and making decisions, right? So, number one, it is a set of procedures, right? It is a set of procedures, which means there are steps to follow. They are kind of like... Um, steps to climb in doing needs assessment. It's a, it's a systemic, systematic uh, I mean, process where you need to start from point A, then go to point B, point C, point D, and then at the end of the day, all this together will help you to know the needs of your trainees, right? So it's a systematic procedure that are taken for the purpose of setting priorities, right? So um, we do needs assessment because we know that there's a lot. Teachers want to learn a lot of things. They want to learn about communication. They want to learn about teaching strategies. They want to learn about lesson planning. They want to know about to learn about backward designing. They want to learn about technology. They want to learn about interpersonal relationship between themselves. They want to learn about, you know, like a professional relationship between the teacher and the students. They want to know about emotional attachment to the students. They want to know about a mountain of things. There's a lot of things that they want to learn. And so unfortunate that we cannot train them in everything. So by doing needs assessment, it helps you as a trainer to set priorities. To know that, okay, these teachers want to learn these 100 things. However, for now, we can arrange these needs in the level of importance. And then we can, as we can start with this and then end up with this, right? So you are setting priorities based on the needs of your of your of your teachers or of your prospective trainees, right? And that will help you to make decisions, different kinds of decisions, decision related to resources, decision related to organization, decision related to time, decisions related to even constructing the training itself, right? So because you know the needs and you know the uh, the priorities that you have you can know that, okay, this is how I can organize my training. So, so that is the true definition 
of needs assessment. And then the last one is this assessment is a tool, is a tool that formerly harvest gaps, right? So we have a gap. We have a gap between the ideal change or the desired change and the current situation or the present reality, right? You know your teachers are here right now. They are struggling to teach tenses. They are struggling to teach literature, you know, like literature analysis. They are struggling to, um, to help students, you know, practice they are English. They are struggling with A, B, C, D, E. They are struggling with a lot of things, right? Now, the goal is for you to make sure you help them to achieve this, right? To achieve uh, this goal, this dream, this um, this desired uh, desired world where students and teachers just communicate communicate easily without any problem. All students and teachers feel like oh. The teacher is doing a good job and the students are doing a great job as well, right? So this is a design change. Now, how, what is the distance between the present reality and that design change? So needs assessment help you, like helps you to know this gap, to be aware of this gap and how big is the gap so that you can plan accordingly um, your training. However, needs assessment is just a tool. It just a tool. It's not a training by itself, right? It's not the design change by itself. It is just a tool to help you gauge something. Okay? Perfect. Now, why do we need to do needs assessment? I think I've mentioned a couple of them already, but the main purpose of doing needs assessment is to inform our design and implementation of any uh, program that we want for intervention purposes. That is the main purpose of needs assessment to help with the design and implementation. Because you need to be aware of the gap. You need to be, to be aware of the things that your learners need. You need to be aware of the resources that you have. You need to be aware of, about um, how can you mobilize these resources. You need to be aware about funds. You need to be aware about the magnitude of the problem. You need to be aware about a lot of things. So needs assessment helps you to design and implement your, your training, right? because you are knowledgeable of the inputs that you need to have for that training to be uh, successful. And some of the benefits of needs assessment are mentioned down below, right? Um, so uh, it helps us to know the specific needs of our learners. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if you put together a training that is not relevant to the needs of your, your learners, then they won't care about learning, right? But you also need to, uh, you're doing it because you want to maximize your your mobilization of resources, right? You want to know first what is needed. Second is to what extent or how much is it needed? And third, where can you get it, right? You need to know where to get these resources. If you have 100 participants, uh, who want to learn about A, B, C, D, and E, you need to know about the venue, you need to know about the stationaries, you need to know about the trainers that you're going to bring, you need to know about, about everything. Plus, you need to know about their behaviors as well, so that you can know how to position yourself in relation to them, right? So, needs assessment help you with this mobilization of um, this kind of resources. But when you do needs assessment, you are invoking the a humanizing pedagogy you know uh if you you guys have read i believe you have read uh paulo Freire's uh pedagogy of the oppressed and in the book paul Freire is really critiquing the habit of doing some everything for for the learners right assuming that learners are just tabular racers who don't know anything and for that reason they need to be held um because they don't know anything they're just ignorant majority Right? So, by doing needs assessment, you are humanizing your teaching, your pedagogy. Right? You are trying to show that okay, I value my learners. Right? They are not just um, they are not just tabular rasas. They are not just some empty sets seated there waiting to be fed, waiting to be trained, waiting to be you know installed with everything. No, you are valuing them as human beings with knowledge and an awareness and expertise, and they know exactly what they want, and that you are trying to tap on what they want and not what you, as the trainer, want. 
that's how we we humanize uh, pedagogies. That's how we humanize um, our teaching. But also, it helps us to you know put together a relevant training. You know, training that caters the needs of 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 your trainees. Um, and I think one good thing I like with needs assessment is the behavior it creates on the teachers, on the participants, both you as the trainer and the trainees. You know, in, in, in the pedagogy of the oppressed, I think in the later chapters, I, I believe it's uh, chapter seven, if I'm not mistaken, um, Paulo Ferre is talking about something he calls praxis. Praxis is the distance between theory in practice, right? And Paul Freire is making an argument that for us to be able to address this game between theory and practice, we need to always act reflectively. We need to always engage in metacognition, sitting down, think about our action, question ourselves like, where did I get them wrong? I mean, how did I do them? What was wrong? How can I improve so that tomorrow we'll have better results right so this process of engaging in self-questioning engaging in metacognition is very important in teachers professional development it's very important in uh in in maintaining or in instituting sustainable professional development why because when you force teachers to think about their teaching about their past and their present and how and what they can do for their future, you are pushing them to engage in self-reflexivity. You are pushing them to question their, I mean, to figure out their gaps. You are pushing them to seek extra knowledge to address their gaps. You are pushing them to think about the past so that they can make the future, right? So by doing that, you are instituting the habit of professional development that is super sustainable. Next time when you go to them, you won't even encourage them to attend your 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 your, your training because they will develop this um internal motivation, right? They, they will have this kind of like um like um they will be self motivated to seek trainings because they already know how to engage with this self questioning. And for that reason, of course, we will be acquired, we will be achieving the overarching goal of any professional development, which is to turn teachers into lifelong learners, right? And then, um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, by doing needs assessment, we are acting proactively to stop or to avoid any unnecessary resistance from teachers. Because when teachers feel like they are part of the training, then they, they feel ownership, right? They feel like they are responsible to learn. And because they feel like they are responsible to learn, they won't resist your training. You know what? I'm going to give you a quick story. When I came to the U.S. in 2016, as a teacher from Morogoro Second School, I was trained with a lot of things. I was, I was equipped with, you know, cutting edge instructional technology. I knew a lot about lesson design. I spent a, like, focusing on backward designing and how to, you know, come up with like a very good lesson plan and curriculum that you have by learners. I, I, I learned how to start from the student's needs to the teacher. You know, I, I learned how to, you know, act home, to mobilize my, my material resources in the classroom so that I can meet the needs of my students. So I came back to Tanzania after being trained for one semester with a lot of skills. And I wanted very hard to cascade this knowledge and skills to the fellow teachers. I saw my fellow teachers as people who were teaching, uh, who were, you know, employing very outdated ways of teaching because I, I felt like I'm an expert right now. I want to transform these teachers and make them the best possible. And then for that reason, I decided, I started to put together trainings, trainings after trainings after trainings to equip teachers with this knowledge and that knowledge. You know what happened? Teacher didn't care how enthusiastic I was. They resisted my trainings. No matter how hard I tried, 
They kept pushing me back. They even tried to label me. Oh, you are trying to act American. You are, you pretend that you know a lot of things. You, you, you want to be recognized. You want to blah, blah, blah. They had a lot of labels. At the end of the day, those labels overwhelmed me. And then they pushed me back to the default. I stopped the trainings. I stopped my desire. I needed to kind of like hijack my desire uh, to transform teachers and stop it because it didn't work, right? But that thing was super painful. So two years later, when I was doing my master's at the University of Rochester, I mean, University of Pennsylvania in Indiana, um, in the University of Pennsylvania, I decided to focus my thesis research on that aspect. I wanted to know why did these teachers resist it? Why did they resist my training, right? Why did they uh, refuse to learn from me? I was educated. I had a lot of skills to share with them, but they didn't feel, it didn't, it didn't feel as if they wanted to learn from me. What happened? And then I learned that part, part of the resistance was because I tried to impose everything to them. I treated them as people who don't know anything, who need to be trained. And for that reason, they resisted. From that day, I started to appreciate um, the usefulness of needs assessment. If I had the opportunity to at least conduct a, a short needs assessment, I would know what they wanted. I would be able to show them that this thing is not mine, it's yours. And who knows, maybe my program could have been successful. But because I, I, I overlooked that aspect, my training failed. So this is the reason we're doing this assessment, to make sure that we act proactively um, to, um, to avoid unnecessary resistance, right? And finally, we are trying to avoid prescriptive training, the kind of training that comes from the top to the bottom, the kind of training that tells our teachers that you guys need, need to be planned for, need to be trained, need to, to be, like some people somewhere need to think about you or they need to think for you. They don't need to think with you. So these needs, conducting needs assessment help us to, you know, uh, avoid all these um, dehumanizing uh, aspects of our teaching. So there are four strategies that you can employ to learn about the needs of your, of your teachers, right? Um, first, you can you can do survey and questionnaire, right? I believe when Delta was putting together this training, I'm not sure if it was this training or any other training. I believe I, I remember that they sent out some some surveys, right? They sent out some questionnaires through Google Forms. I remember because I took part in that. Right? Sent to different teachers, trying to gauge their needs. What did they want? They were some said we want to learn about technology. Others say we want to learn about you know about language teaching uh, strategies. Some said we want to learn about lesson planning. Some said we want to learn about assessment. Some said they want to learn about blah, blah, blah. So they mentioned a lot of things. And Ayub and his team sat down and analyzed this data and prioritized. They found out that, oh, our teachers want to learn about this topic and this topic and this topic and this topic. And for that reason, they put together this training. So this training is the product of the needs assessment that was conducted by Delta. Okay? So you are taking part in the very living examples of the needs assessment, of the fruits of the needs assessment. So one way is to send out questionnaires and surveys, and you can do that you by using different ways you can send like um hard copy questionnaires to teachers and let them fill uh the papers or you can put together a google form um ask teachers to respond to the questions that you 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 prepare for them you can send them a quadric survey um you can ask them to shoot you uh some emails and tell you what they want to learn you can go to their needs from taking part in the, um, you know, sending this kind of like open questions, open surveys um, in, let's say, group chats, like WhatsApp group chats or Telegram group chats. You can go, I, I think you can, you can garner teachers' responses to your survey and questionnaires through a million ways, right? So 
Um, how do you need to do that? I mean, how can you use technology? I think that will be the question for next time. But for the time being, just know that you can use surveys and questionnaires to um to go to the needs of your of your of your teachers and learners. Number two, you can use focus group discussions in the interview, right? You can interview teachers, sit down with them, ask them, what do you want to learn? What are you struggling with? Why do you think you're struggling? What kind of knowledge do you want so that um, you can address the problem that you have? You can give them a topic, right? Put them in group discussions and then be a very, um, be a very, I would say, how should I put it? Be somebody who is very attentive and not taker. Jot down, down like everything they say about the topic that you give them to discuss. Ask them intriguing questions so that you can learn more about what they want. So, so group discussions and interviews are also part of the strategies that you can use to um uh, to explore the needs of your learners, right? Um, another way is through classroom discussion. I mean, through classroom observation. Go to these teachers' classes if possible to their schools. Walk out of their rooms. See how they are teaching. See how see how they're interacting with their with their students, right? Um, after the session, ask them questions. Ask the teacher questions. Ask the students questions. If there's something that you want them to clarify to you, ask them. Like, okay, I saw you doing this and this um, at this time uh, of the uh, of the session. What were you trying to accomplish with this? I felt like students did not do this and this because of this. What do you think is the reason, right? And then from that kind of interaction and observation and ethnographic kind of like ethnographic uh, note taking, you may be able to figure out their needs, right? In that way, it will be easier for you to sit down, analyze this information and know exactly that, okay, if I want to put together a training, this is what my trainees want to learn. And finally, you can figure out about the needs of your uh, of your trainees or prospective trainees by doing data analysis and collaboration. We have a lot of data, a lot of data. If you go to Tami Semi right now, open up their website, you will see that they have a lot of statistics about various things um, in, in our schools, in our education. You can do analysis of those data, and then from that analysis, you can figure out what are the needs of the people I want or to train. Or you can go to these schools, pull out their, their national examination results, sit down with them, try to analyze um, uh, the, the, the results, right? How do they perform in subject A, B, and C? We are English language teachers. How do they perform in English? Try to go to NECTA, pull, the, pull out um, that subject analysis you know, report, go through the items and see how do they analyze these items. What, uh, how do students respond to questions? What are their struggles? And how can we figure out how to help teachers learn how to teach students to you know, uh, respond to these kind of items? So this kind of analysis can help you to figure out about the needs of, you, of, your, of your trainees as well. What I want to encourage is for you to sit down and do it collaboratively with these teachers so that they can feel like they are part of the training. Right? They are involved in the training. It's not just something done for them. It's something done with them. Right? So you can either use one of these strategies or like use a combination of these strategies, which is I highly encourage, so that you can get rich data that will help you to figure out the needs um, of your learners. But there are phases when it comes to, to, to conducting needs assessment. And before we talk about these phases, I just want to slow down a little bit and give folks um, an opportunity to stand up and stretch a little bit, take a glass of water um, before we, we proceed. Because I know that uh, our attention span cannot go beyond, uh, beyond one hour. So sometimes it's, it's good to ask teachers to remember that, okay, the people we are training are not just, you know, blogs, or trees that can sit in the same place for a long time. Let's stand up, do some stretch for two, three minutes, take a glass of water, and then we will finish the reminder of our training. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Hey guys, you may turn on your camera so that we can warm up a little bit. We still have 30 minutes and more to go. Perfect. If you can turn on your camera, we can do a little stretch. Some stretch. Let's turn on our camera. Thank you, yeah. Becca. For yeah, that's a little bit. That's a little bit. You're not killing yourself, okay? 
Yeah, your mind cannot receive things if your body is not healthy, right? <laughs> you need to make sure that you train your body, you make it alert and ready to, you know, to to receive information before it can receive information efficient. So let's start up, guys. Stop being lazy just for two minutes. Turn on your camera, guys. And this is good for your cardio as well, right? It's good for your heart and your, your vital organs. Yes, just a little bit. This is very enough. Uh-huh. Nice. 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 Mark, you have a blanket. <laughs> Seems so cold in Kilimanjaro. It's okay, Docratias. We don't need to see you. You can just stand up and stretch. <laughs> nice, folks. I see Limo. Limo is with her blankets. Like, yeah. <laughs> Cool. One more minute, and then we 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 will get going. All right. So take a minute to grab a glass of water. Um, say hi to your kids or some of us who are parents. I have my baby here. <laughs> Let me check if he is alive. Here's my new baby boy. <laughs> He's just seven days old. <laughs> Congratulations, doctor. Oh, that's so beautiful and nice of you, doctor. Wow. He's not sleeping now. Take him back to his chamber. <laughs> to see him. Say hello to him. Yeah, so I, I did this because I want to remind you that you are teachers, but you are parents. You don't need to put away your social identity right? just because you're a teacher. No, you're a teacher, you're a parent, you are a brother, you are everybody. So enjoy, love it. That's part of us. That's part of being okay, teachers. Right? Is... We are parents and sometimes teachers. That's right? great. Wow. There's no shame. <laughs> I do everything for my kids. Right? I shower them, I clean my house, I cook, I do everything and I enjoy it because they are part of me and I love them. All right. Let's finish up this thing. So, after learning about the strategies that we can use to um, explore um, the needs of our learners, now we need to know that there are phases to conduct needs assessment. There are three major phases that you need to think about when it comes to conducting uh, needs assessment. Phase number one is the pre-assessment stage, right? The pre-assessment phase is when down and plan about the assessment and think about the assessment. You try to find out, okay, what is the purpose of my training? What do I want first? Right? So by needs assessment, doesn't mean that you don't have a purpose. No, you have a purpose, you have a goal, but you want to make sure that your training is relevant to the needs of your teachers, but at the same time, achieve the goal that you have. Right. So the pre-assessment is the, is the moment to sit down and think about these things. What is the purpose of my, 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 of my training and the needs assessment that I want to conduct? Right? What are the areas of concern that I want to explore? Remember, I mentioned that we know we cannot cover everything. Um, we have so much time to cover just enough, right? So you do this planning and decision making at the pre-assessment stage, right? And then you need to decide what strategy are you going to use for needs assessment? Are you going to use survey and questionnaire? Are you going to do uh, focal group discussions? Are you going to do classroom observation? Are you going to do data analysis, right? What kind of strategy are you going to adapt or to employ in order to figure out uh, about the needs of, of your, of your uh, training, right? So all these things are done in the pre-assessment. And I will mention later that we need a special team here, right? We need a special committee here. If let's say it's Delta Mwanza or Delta wherever, 
or just a school initiative. You need to form a small committee. A committee can be made by just two people, right? Who can sit together and think about the, the, the assessment and then um, construct um, the, the methodology of conducting this needs assessment, uh, decide about the strategy and everything, right? So this pre-assessment phase is where you think about the logistics of your assessment. Right? and make decisions about the tools that you're going to use. Plus, in the pre-assessment also, you need to put together the instrument. For instance, if you decide to use a survey or a questionnaire, you need to have survey questions. You need to have those, uh, those questions that we put in the questionnaire. Right? In the pre-assessment stage is where you, you, you kind of like think about the kind of questions you use. You construct these questions. I think in, 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 uh, in, in research jargons, um, it's called instrument. So you put together this in instrument, you try them out, right? You make sure that you try it with your colleagues, with your friends, so that by the time you take it to the teachers, then they are, you, you won't face any kind of dilemmas or uncertainties or things that are, um, like things that are not necessary. Um, they, they, they're not necessary at that stage. So you can do your assignment at the very beginning, make sure that everything works before you go to the implementation stage. Then phase two is where you implement everything, is where you collect the data, is where um, you give teachers the instrument and, you know, and, and, and collect the information you need from them, right? Um, at this stage also is where you start to think about sources, right? Um, you will decide about what kind of sources of data do you want. And in the second phase, you will make sure that you uh, extract information from all these sources. You, you extract information from teachers, from parents, from students, from administration, from the municipalities, and all those sources of information can give you rich data that can help you to make informed decision in terms of the needs of your learners. And of course, in the last phase is where now you sit down with your team and analyze the data. You go through the data, through the uh, survey responses from your teachers, you read them through thoroughly, and then you decide, okay, what is the common thread here, right? What, what things recurs like all over? For instance, if you're like, oh, I feel like 85% of the teachers I, I explored want to learn about instructional technology, right? And then maybe 20% want to learn about, uh, about communica communicative English, how to teach communicative English. And then maybe 5% want to learn about literature. And maybe 2% want to learn about grammar. They want blah, 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 right? So after analyzing data, you will know what is the common thread throughout and at that point now, you can prioritize. You can know, okay, I have 12 needs over here, but this one is the first. This is the high needed thing. And this one is the second high needed thing. And this one is the least needed thing. So we're gonna start with the high needed. And then if we have enough resources, maybe we will cover the least needed, okay? So, these three phases are super important when it comes to uh, conducting needs assessment. Number one, think about the assessment, plan about the assessment. Number two, do the assessment. Number three, analyze the data you got from the assessment. And if time permits and resource permits, go back to your to your to your teachers and try to do some follow up assessment to find out whether the needs um, you you um, you ended up with are the real needs that uh, that they have. Okay? So, come on, come on, perfect. Now, strategies, phases, three phases, now there are steps, right? There are steps that you need to follow. Remember, the second definition of needs assessment is um, it's a procedural process, right? It's a process that follows a certain procedure, right? And the procedure is like the one you see on the screen right now, right? We have steps to follow, right? Which are kind of like six steps, and maybe more than that, but I just decided to come up with these six because I feel like they give us an overview of what we 
Please give me one minute. I need to attend my son, and then I'll come back to you. All right, I'm back. What happened? Cool. Okay. Oh no. Sorry, 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 good people. I feel like my computer is misbehaving. Is there anything wrong? Maybe you have been hacked like the, the Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the screen sharing has stopped as the shared window is closed. Okay. So let me do something. Let me try to share it again. The good thing with technology is it does not talk. So we can still control it. Which is cool. Absolutely. Can you right now? That's very true. Yeah. Wait, anyway, it is coming in a few minutes. Yeah. There it is. Perfect. Let's, 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 let's keep going. Yeah, okay. then you can put full screen. Okay. Um, I'm trying to go to slideshow. Uh, hopefully, it will take us there. So, there are six steps that you need to follow in conducting the assessment, right? Um, number one, I've talked about it already in the first phase, is you need to form a committee. For well, this committee, you need to take charge uh, with the needs assessment process. They need to put together everything. They need to make important decisions. So, uh, it's a good idea to tax a certain group of people with this task so that um, they can do something that is productive, right? So number, the first step is to decide who will deal with needs assessment, right? Don't try, if you are a leader in some place, don't try to be everything. Don't try to be a conductor, a bus driver, and the traffic and everything at the same time. Try to delegate these uh, responsibilities and um, forming a small committee and title them with the task of conducting needs assessment or at least planning for the needs assessment is, is a good idea. Number two, uh, let your committee establish the goals for the intervention, right? Because as I mentioned earlier, uh, needs assessment is all about figuring out um, the gap between the desired change in the present reality, right? So let your committee figure out about the goals of your intervention the goals of their train of your training, the uh, the desired change, and then uh, they can help you um to put together uh, the instrument and strategies and all other plannings for the needs assessment. Number three, develop instruments you need um for uh, for the assessment and try them try them out. I talked about this already. Um, this is about thinking about the strategy that you use. Uh, if you're gonna use classroom observation then you need to know how will you observe. Are you going to be there physically in, in person or will you do it virtually? Maybe you are, the teacher will um, invite you to their class through through Zoom or through Google Hangout. Um, so try to, I, I mean, it's it, after, after establishing goals, it's important to think about the strategy and the instrument that you're going to use. Okay. Number, number four is the data collection. Now you know uh, everything, you have planned everything, you are entering the second stage. The second stage, the second phase, which is the first step, is to collect data. Collect data within a particular time frame. Make sure you put a time frame because sometimes uh, data collection um, can take forever. So if you decide that, okay, I'm going to do this for two weeks, just do it for two weeks and go with the amount of data that you have at, that, at, at the end of two weeks, right? Um, the first step is to analyze your data. Sit down, analyze your data. Data, the data you get are not the needs. I think I, I reminded people yesterday that those are just data. They are no needs, okay? So you need to analyze them, figure out the patterns, and make, um, you know, make some conclusion based on what you see. Uh, conclusions, and that conclusion is the need of, of, of your trainees. 
and if possible do to some follow-up right i mentioned about this already do a follow-up try to see what this teacher whether these teachers are really uh, i mean they really need what you you they find out um in your um, exploration okay now there are important factors that you need to consider in all this process right very important factors number one remember to involve as many stakeholders as possible because you need a richer data set right you need to make sure that you know a lot about this teacher don't just um um collect information from teachers right try to take some information from students as well try to talk to headmasters and see what do they want right try to talk to parents if possible Try to talk to some people at the, at the municipal or district council or whatever. Try to talk to different stakeholders and see what they tell you uh, in relation to the thing that you want to, 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 to teach or to train. Okay. So this will help you um you know develop some sort of like uh, a holistic understanding of the needs of your teacher but sometimes teachers don't know what they need for sure this is the reality we should not assume that oh because they're teachers they know everything no sometimes they don't know what they need right so and maybe they don't know what they need because they don't have the language to explain what they need right they know exactly that this is what is going on but they don't know what language they, they can use to shape the things that they want right so by exploring different sources of information and involving multiple stakeholders you are in a very good position to figure out about the true needs of your teachers. And then choose the method of data collection that align with the needs and resources of your teachers, right? They align with the, with the, with the reality of your teachers. You, you won't, it, it doesn't make sense sending, let's say, a Qualtrics survey to teachers in Kibondo district or wherever, where maybe they don't a certain village or whatever in keyboard i'm just making up names i don't even know about that this place where they don't have internet or maybe they don't have phones right doesn't make sense right so think about something that is relevant to the to the reality and context uh, of, of of your participants or of your prospective uh, trainees um do the assessment with the teachers not for the teachers, right? I mentioned this, and this is something that um, uh, Freire is reminding us in the pedagogical press, that you need to do something with the teachers. Involve them throughout the process. Involve them in the decision-making. Involve them in constructing the instrument. Let them help you thinking or languaging the questions that you want to ask them, right? Let them help you. They know a lot about the things they want. So ask them, like, how do you put this in terms of, in the form of a question? And then they can put together a good question and give you that question. Maybe you will play with the language of that question a little bit to make sure that it fits your needs. But at least it shows them that they are involved from the very early stages um, of, of the assessment. Right? You can also involve them in the data collection. I mean, in the data analysis, right? Um, sit down together with them. Analyze the... the, uh, the analyze um the result of the examination with them right go through the math the, the the result from the nectar uh in those um those item ana analysis report and discuss with them right figure out like okay what is going on here over here how can we figure out about this what do you think about that let them feel that they are part of the process because it gives them ownership and ownership comes with responsibility they will feel responsible if you involve them because they feel that they own the training. If they don't do that, then they're going to leave everything to you, and that will be very difficult for, very difficult for you to achieve um, the overarching goals of your training. Um, remember about the political nature of the space that you want um, to explore the needs, right? Uh, what do they think about you? In some places, you, can not, you, cannot, you cannot just go and collect information. Some teachers feel like they are gods. They know everything. They don't want anybody to tell them that they don't know anything. So think about this political nature, right? Go there, position yourself. What is your agenda? It matters a lot. I, I researched uh, teachers in Zanzibar, um, and I found out that gender was almost a significant factor that changed almost everything in the professional development. 
some male teachers in Zanzibar didn't want to be questioned, even to be taught by female teachers because they felt like they felt that uh, as long as they are male teachers, they know everything. And female teachers are always down, so they cannot be taught by, by male teachers, right? So this political nature will help you to understand that, okay, this is how I need to position myself in relation to the people that I'm trying to explore, okay? And I already, uh, I, I mean, underlined this, that your data are not your needs, so they are just tools to help you figure out the, about the needs. So you, you should not forget about that. And finally, every situation is different. Don't just transfer the things, uh, the assessment that you did in one place to another, assuming that things will work out fine. No, things are different. Teachers are different. They have different identities. That means even the approach they take um, um, in the assessment will be different. The responses they give will be different. Um, the tools you use in context A will be different from those they use in context B. So don't forget uh, um, about this. So in conclusion, we do need assessment because we want to know that, okay, what is happening? What areas do we need to target? What is needed by these teachers? And how can we put together a very relevant professional development that caters uh, to the needs of these guys? By so doing, you will increase teacher engagement, they will feel satisfied, and they will give you the best uh, cooperation in your training. And consequently, and this is the end result, our students or the students' outcome um, will be improved because the teachers will be lifelong learners. They will develop, um, they will accumulate a lot, of, a lot of knowledge and skills and expertise and they will transfer these skills to their classrooms and everything they do in the classroom will bring about um, um, like amazing results in terms of students' achievement. So this is uh, just how much I prepared for you guys. I'm not sure if I was able to address the needs of everybody over here, but at least, and this was my initial objective, it gives you some some clue of what you need to do uh, when you you embark on this um, journey of training fellow teachers. Thank you very much for your undivided attention and I'll be looking forward for questions if you have any. Thank you so much, Onesmo. Please welcome if you have any question. You may unmute and ask, raise your hand. Yes, we have Onesmo Samuel. Please welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I would like to share a little bit about this one. You know, I wrote a proposal to submit for REO in the Lindy region. When I reached to his office, he told me that you have to go back and do a research to uh, recognize the challenges and how we can solve those challenges. So it seems like a, it's a light for me from this presentation. Thank you very much once again. Thanks much, um, Onesmo. That's a very uh, relevant um, example of um, how significant needs assessment is. Right. Um, yesterday I shared um, with the other folks that if you want now to apply for funds, let's say from any funding source, could be the US Embassy Tanzania or other institutions who are um, um, offering funds for teachers' professional development, oftentimes they will ask you about the needs of your of your participants, right? They'll be like, what is the statement of needs, right? What is the statement of the problem? You cannot put together a statement of the problem if you don't do needs assessment, right? So that's a very good idea. Um, that's a very good um, example of how things play on the ground. Thank you very much, Samuel. Thank you, Onesmo, and another Onesmo, doctor. And please welcome. Any question, positive feedback, please welcome. Yeah, yes, Augustine, you, can, you, can, you can do that. Please write your question on the chat. You don't need to speak it out. Ntaki. Please welcome. Yes. 
Yes, I have seen you unmute. So maybe you want to speak. Welcome. Okay, Dr. Onesmus, uh, Onesmus Samuel asks, you talk mm. when words appear. How can I do that? Pardon? Come again? Onesmo Samuel asks that you talk uh -huh. while words appear. How can I do that? Oh, yeah. I think you can just turn on your caption. And then it will help you to do that automatically. Um, I don't know how I did this. <laughs> so, <laughs> But if you play with your Zoom a little bit, it will show you how to do that. Okay, guys. Next time, try to switch on your caption and let's do it for real. Thank you. Another comment, question, please, you may write in the chat box or raise your hand and mute and speak. Benda, welcome. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you, and I would like to thank Mr. Onesmo from America for the great presentation he has done this evening. For sure, we have learned a lot from him. And uh, I would like to, uh, to thank him and appreciate that I have learned a lot from the needs assessment. It's, it was a new topic for me, but mm -hmm. I have learned a lot. And I'm going to work on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Onesimo from America. Wow. Thanks, Pendo. My thank pleasure you, that Pendo. you this Yes, uh, I can see uh, Veronica. Fortunata first and then Veronica. Fortunata, please welcome. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pendo, and thank you, Dr. Mushi. It was a great classroom, and I have enjoyed it. What I have learned from the presentation is that I have learned I should change my ways. I have to, I will stop doing for the students. I would rather do with them. And that will be for everybody. If I'm going somewhere for something, I should be doing it with, but not for. And doing that way, I will see that I will be pretty like uh, I will entrust the person the ownership of the thing. If it's a lesson, if it's a session, then they will feel that they are honored and given the good chance to own the thing. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, Ntui. Thank you. Thank you, Fortunata. While we are welcoming uh, Veronica, we have a message here in the chat box from Betha. Betha says, thank you, doctor, for a great presentation, for a great uh, active classroom presentation. Thank you, Betha, for writing the chat box. And please welcome Veronica. Thank you, thank you, Madam And thank you, Dr. I would like to appreciate doctor for the presentation. I thank him for teaching us how to to present things without, without taking people for granted as for uh, other teachers and students. Let us don't take them as tablerizers, but giving them time to share what they, they know and what they need the interest of the people. Because for me, this is a big lesson that I have learned today. I was planning to have a seminar with the women concerning gender-based violence and I, do, I don't know even how could I start it but from this presentation I learned a lot and I'm so sure I will be having a, um, a standing up presentation. Thank you Dr. Thank you Madam C. Um, until you are muted. Until, until you are muted, you are muted, you are muted. 
Oh, thank you. Technology somewhat. Thank you very much. Uh, Veronica, thank you for the contribution. And before I welcome Ayub, we have two uh, messages. One from Taki. Taki says, thanks for the great, uh, for wonderful presentation. I have learned a lot. Everest says, thank Dr. Onesmo for giving us good lecture. And we have Samuel Mandu says, what is the difference between uh, focus group in depth interview has strategies for the needs assessment? Uh, and you have uh, now Mark Lemo says, by the end of the presentation, I always give my audience chances to write their reflective, but uh, you find that some participants are commenting something strange out of the topic taught. How could I cut uh, their needs it's like we have two questions here doctor and we have fortunata she says thanks uh, special thanks to dr moshi in chaga so please let me allow you to answer the two questions before i proceed with other comments please or shall all right, i so, read uh, all the comments okay cool um so um, to you, you you will remind me about the other question so the first question is about the difference between um between focus group and, and in-depth interview. So focus group, like focus group is just a group discussion. It could be a group discussion of some sort, right? Um, I can have like a group of five teachers, so this is, I'm just taking an example. And then they are seated somewhere. I can give them a topic, some lead questions. And then I act as, um, as an observer, right? Seated there around just jotting down, taking down notes, right? So I, I let them have like, let's say kind of like a panel, discu panel discussion about the topic of interest. And then I'm just taking notes about the things they want. So from what they say, from their conversation, I can figure out what they need, right? So that could be a, an example of focus group, right? Um, and then in-depth interview could be a one-to-one -one interview like this one, right? I have questions could be structured questions where I know everything that I want to ask you, or it could be like an open-ended or unstructured interview where I ask you questions based, I ask you a lead question and ask you follow-up question based on how you, you, you respond to my, my initial questions, right? So that could be an in-depth interview. And maybe to make it even more in-depth, I can, we can have like multiple, multiple interview sessions. Maybe I can interview you like five times, in a month just to learn more about that particular topic. That, that is an example of an in-depth um, interview. So with the between you as a researcher or a trainer and your prospective um, trainees, right? But with a group discussion, you they are discussing something, you put them in the group, you give them a topic to discuss, and you act as an observer taking notes. Or you can even take part in that group discussion as well. It depends. But um, to avoid that kind of like um, confusion in terms of playing roles, you can act as an observer and just jot down notes. I, I believe that is kind of like um, um, a, maybe a, a quick difference between uh, focus group and in-depth interview. What is the, the second question, Itui? Thank you, Dr. Mark Lemo says, by the end of my presentation, I always give my audience chances to write their reflection but you find uh, that some participants are commenting something strange out of topic told. How could I cater their needs? Um, so there is so much that we can do for teachers. Remember in, uh, in my talk, I said that um, teachers want to learn about everything, right? They want to learn about everything. They want to learn about technology, they want to learn about tenses, they want to learn about communication, they want to learn about literature, they want to learn about assessment, they want to learn about everything, right? Now, with needs assessment, what you do is trying to find out what is the pattern, right? What do many people say about certain things, right? So if you have, let's say, if you assess 100 people and then you find out, you find out that 20% talked about things that are out of what you wanted, but 80% talked about the things that you feel like this is relevant to what I want or to what I plan to do, then you can go with the needs of the 80% because they are the majority, right? This is a kind of like a democratic process for some nature, right? The, way, the, the majority are the winners, right? But sometimes 
Even the irrelevant can give you something. So don't just ignore them, right? Maybe follow up. Ask them, what did you mean by this? What do you want? Can you, can, can you be specific on this? Can you give me examples? They can help you understand what they want. Because sometimes teachers don't really have the language to express what they need, right? So it's through this um, interrogation that they get the language to explain exactly what they, 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 they want. So I would encourage you to kind of like do some follow-up but sometimes you just need to be patient, right? Some people just write everything. You can ignore things that you feel like these are super relevant and focus on the things that uh, that look um, relevant to you. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, are you please? You may well. Uh, you may come in, but allow me to read uh, the following positive feedback from Joseph Mgalula. Says, I appreciate the new presentation to me. Uh, to work on with my learners and Thomas says nice lesson but uh, in teaching is a big challenge help us please and we have the gratis another new knowledge acquired today I love learning new things every day and need assessment is in need a new thing to me and we have Veronica with a positive feedback appreciating the presentation and Niaeli is asking that Thank you, doctor, for the great presentation. How do I accommodate the learners who are not in the same class like us in assessing their need analysis? I think that one will be our last uh, question. And I will welcome you. Please, doctor, welcome for this one. Um, yeah, um, this is a very good question from, oh, from, from Nia Eli. Um, I'm not sure if I get it well when you say uh, learners who are not in the same class as us. What do you mean? Do you mean in terms of levels that uh, that uh, that one class is, let's say, more knowledgeable than the other, or one class? I, I, I can you help me clarify the class thing first, so that I can address your question um, well, if you don't mind. Oh, same room. He says, uh, I mean in the same room. Same room. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 it's still unclear to me, unfortunately. But I, I, I think I think when you're conducting needs assessment, um, you don't need to do things to people um who are in the same whether it's locality or space like like yours right it can be people from wherever right um what matters is how do you conduct the needs assessment and not who are you conducting uh, the needs assessment with or to right um you just need to learn about the instrument you're using the strategy that you're using um the resources that you have and how can you make sure that um, the whole process is relevant to the resources and context um, of the people you're exploring? That is, I think, the best I can put it. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, and please allow me to welcome Ayub, since we, the time is really running. Ayub, please welcome, so that I can end the session for today. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much uh, for this great presentation. It was a great session today. Thank you, Dr. Onesmo. Uh, just a few things that I wanted to point out uh, with the participants. Number one, uh, please do your best to attend all the sessions. Attend all the 10 sessions. And as we agree that if you miss... If you miss three sessions, uh, no matter how beautiful the excuse, there won't be a certificate for you. We are insisting on that. You miss three sessions, we won't have a certificate for you. You go eight, nine, ten sessions you attend, you have certificates. Because right now we have like few people are not here. And then maybe you never know, some other day you miss maybe one you miss one by the time we finish the 10 sessions you have three three absents uh, and uh, 
will say thank you for your attendance, but you will not qualify for for a certificate. Let, let's let's work on that so that 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 should not happen. Uh, number two, once you are attending this session, please open up your mind in a way that you will think about you as a trainer, not you as a teacher. This session is not here to train you to become good yeah. teachers. We are not we are not here to train you to become good teachers in your classes. We are here to train you to become good workshop presenters, presenting to your fellow teachers who are uh, maybe they have same level of education as you. Uh, they and and some they have more uh, more experience and more education than yours. You have a you have a bachelor degree. You have a diploma. You'll be training people who are having master degree, uh, who are having bachelor degree and uh, experience of ten to fifteen, twenty years in the in the job. So those are kind of people that you will be training, and therefore we are training each other right here, so that you can master those skills in a way that you can prepare a workshop and present people of all kinds of so and all levels. So don't think don't think of the class and your students think of the of the of the teachers that you'll be you'll be training if you think that way it will be easier for you it will be easier for you to to you know to get the knowledge and the skills otherwise we don't want to leave you behind in any in any way so that's that's an important aspect that i wanted to to keep on insisting because sometimes you might think of the needs needs assessment yeah we are doing to our to our learners but let's think in a terms of teachers who we want to train we want to offer a workshop we want to facilitate a training to our fellow teachers let's think that way that way, this course will be easy for us because that's the main target and the main theme of this training otherwise madam Tui, thank you very much for coordinating and organizing this group uh thank you Onesmo, for a good presentation and have a nice time and all the the members in here thank you have a nice time see you Thank you, Ayub. And once again, Dr. Onesmos, thank you so much for your time and passion to uh, what you have done and what you'll be keeping doing to other teachers here in Tanzania. We really appreciate, I really do appreciate. And this group of almost 24 participants are really appreciating your positive efforts toward our upcoming professional skills so thank you very much and allow me to say have a good evening see you in the next session thank you all and bye bye you may turn on your camera and say bye to all thank you thank you good night thank you good night bye bye God bless Bye. you, madam. I can't madame. turn on my camera. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Ayobu. Thank you, Dr. Nesmo. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Can you respond, please?